so much for to Creative Mornings as well for hosting me. I feel very honored to be here um, and to be telling you a little bit about our Monkey Biz project, um, which our, oh, hang on a sec, okay, here we go. Um, uh, Monkey Biz was, was um, started in 2000 um, by uh, one of the iconic potters of South Africa, Barbara Jackson. And she was um, she, she had this amazing ceramic um, studio which she worked in, but she also had an incredible love for beads. And she collected beads, uh, single beads, bead work from all over Africa, or the world. Um, but part of her, her ethos was to give back. And so therefore, um, Barbara started Monkey Biz. And it was basically for the women, working with the women in Kailicha, in Philippi, in Langa, Nyanga, Delft, all the communities in and around Cape Town in the Western Cape. Um, we do have one or two who are from um, the Eastern Cape who work from there. And it was to basically em empower people to become creative and to re, um, re sort of bring back their cultures that they thought they had lost. So um, we work with women. We have three main principles three main principles that we work with. Um, I'm just going to flick through these so that you can see the, some of the women we work with. The first thing is to empower women to be financially independent within their communities, within their families, so they can stay as breadwinners, so that they can stay as homemakers and work from home. Um, the, oh, okay, oh, okay. Some of the, the items are, <laughs> sorry, um, the, this, is an, this has allowed women to actually earn money um, for, with something that they've actually had coming down the generations. Um, these are just some of the items that they've made and some of the homes that they've lived in, uh, they live in, sorry. Um, many people have never been able to earn, their, they are below the bread line and now they are making money. They're supporting their children, they're sending them to school, buying their kids computers um, and yeah, being able to, to afford, um, even sending some of them to university. Um, the second principle is that we want to um, revive the art of beadwork. So usually, I mean, in historically, um, beadwork has always been adornment, it's always been on clothing, it's always actually told a story, certain colours mean something um, in the past and it was always done by the elders of the community. The youngsters nowadays obviously don't want to do beadwork, there's not a big market for it unless it's a tourism thing and so um, we started using really funky different colours which don't tell a story. We put them onto a 3D surface um, which is different but the technique of thread and bead is still the traditional, um, the traditional method of beading. Once a month, um, we have two groups. We have between 280 and 320 active beaders. We have 400 beaders on our register. Um, active just means that they are bringing in work every single month. Um, the, 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 the other ones might bring work in once in a while. Um, twice a month, we have what we call a market day. We used to have a, um, a container in, well we still do have a container in Makassar and all the women would bring their work th uh, through to the container every Tuesday of the um, month. But the, the container is open to the elements so you know women and children would come along and it would be windy and cold or dusty and you know with the dreadful sand blowing everywhere. Um, and every single um, person would get a, uh, there was a soup kitchen and everyone would get a hearty meal, including whoever else was around um, would get a hearty meal. But it only really fed one person there and then. Um, so what we decided was that we would now transfer the market days um, into Cape Town Centre. We chose 10 group leaders. They collect all the work at the container and they, they, we 
bring them into town with a taxi filled with um, product and they come in, they message everybody when we have comments about the work and they then, um, we, we grade all the work and we then send them back home with all the beads, with stuffing and some have got wire um, skeletons but not everything has a wire skeleton. I need the, the shapes that really need to stay like shapes, like porcupines and sharks and um, poodles. Um, so we, when, when, as you can see with this picture, um, these are just two of the ladies. Um, we have babies in the studio. We have all sorts of people who come in on it. It's a real bun fight. And we also supply each woman with a food, uh, a shopping voucher. Um, so it depends on how much you've brought in, um, but you get a shopping voucher no matter what. Um, which is better than a food, um, a food parcel because we did, do, we did do food parcels but we never really got the products right, you know, it wasn't the right uh, beans or you know, flour or whatever. So now they can save up those, those vouchers and they can use them in one go at the end of the year or whatever. We also um, have a, we also support a burial fund, a, fine, a, um, a funeral fund on behalf of everybody um, on, on the um, register. And um, this is obviously because, as we know in South Africa, funerals and burials are a very important part of the culture. And it's incredibly expensive um, for people to take their families or, you know, up to or go back to the Eastern Cape and hold funerals. Um, so once the, the market day is over, we, they all go back to their communities and they're taking all the product for everybody and any messages that have to happen. We pay our beaters immediately after market day. No one has to wait for their money. They all have bank accounts, which we've set up. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. A couple of the beaters cut off heads. Um, making the product, this is um, uh, Evelyn who's making up a poodle. Um, this is one of our, uh, sorry, half these slides are cut off. I obviously didn't do the right format. Um, we have baboons. We've got every single artist is allowed to um, make their own pattern. They have artistic license to do whatever they want to. We do supply colors for certain customers and they need to work within that. Otherwise, every single piece is, is, is unique. Um, when you're working with beadwork, with this particular beadwork, it's three beads up and you bead along, you come back and you bead along and you come back. This is a mathematical process. They need to know what their pattern is going to look like um, while they're putting it on the animal. So it's, it's very complicated. I've learned how to bead and um, a very small piece has taken me about three months. Um, and it's still not finished. Um, <laughs> so um, this... Um, Elephant was actually made for a whole um, range of elephants in those particular colours for um, Bloomingdale's. Um, as you can see, all these shapes which don't have a skeleton in, the beaders make those shapes themselves. Oh, the, they sew a fabric and they, sorry, a headless giraffe, another headless giraffe. Um, this is a money box made out of a tennis ball. Um, we have bunnies. Um, our quality is really top notch. Um, Anything that is a bad quality, we still take it on, um, but the beaters have two weeks to come in and fix it, um, and then they get paid for it. And most of them do, and we have a very, very small hospital box now, um, because obviously um, people want to keep with their quality. Um, so we do everything. We really try and keep up with what is fashionable and, 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 co and cater for every market. So obviously the pandas are for more the Asian market. Um, Porcupine is for every market. Um, and you can see that has um, all the different um, porkies um, uh, had different colours. And amazing, all right, headless pink poodle. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, a koi fish. And now we go on to the wild dogs. The wild dogs are what we wanted to play forward because wild dogs are so endangered in. Um, in Africa, South Africa. Um, we started a range of wild dogs and we give a very small percentage to the um, Endangered Wild Dog, uh, dog Trust. And um, there are only four, did I say that? 400 in, in, um, in, in the country now. Um, so that is one of the wild dogs um, that we made. These are just a couple. Um, every single piece is actually sold on their faces. So you could come into our, our, our um, studio and see something bright yellow, which you absolutely hate yellow. You look at their faces and that's what you're sold. So the faces are all very different and very expressive. We often get three or four nostrils, um, you know, I don't know, eyes that are squint, but people love those. 
So the koi, and then these are some of the little faces that will look at you. And it's a bunny. Um, this artist, in fact, is, is one of the most incredible artists. She's, she never brings her stuff in regularly, but her work is exceptional. Um, little, yeah, very quaint little faces. Um, another porky. Um, and, uh, yeah, so a baboon. And, of course, we have to go to the back of the animal. Uh, some of that is very attractive and draws people in. Um, <laughs> so... Um, then what we're also always doing is we're trying to um, follow trends and have a look at trends. This picture here is um, we were getting, uh, we grade things by size for the artists. So it goes from a zero, zero, triple zero to a zero, zero, 008 and then we get exhibition pieces. Um, and the artists were bringing pieces in and saying, well, it's, I need to get paid for a zero, zero, 005 and we'd say no, it's a four. And so it was always very difficult for um, them to go out and actually make the right size. So what we did was, uh, as a costing exercise, I said, right, we're going to do absolutely everything in one colour um, to the exact size. Put it on the table when people come and there we go. It's constant all the way through. So I chose yellow, my most hated colour. But we have about four billion beads in yellow. So yellow it was. And um, we have them on top of the cupboards uh, in the studio and customers are coming in and just absolutely going for them and loving them. I'm beating them off with a stick. So what we did was we thought, okay, well, this is a completely new um, idea for us. And we started doing our monochromes, um, which is a it was a totally different market um, and really astounded us. Um, we show at the New York Now gift show um, twice a year through our agent. And we started um, doing these um, uh, monochromes, and it really was the whole designer decorator um, market. So, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, um, which went really, really well. So we brought in a lot of different um, new just monochromes. They whip out. The second thing that we're trying to do is we are trying to. Um, we, sorry, the third thing, <coughs> sorry, is we're really trying to take our crafters to an artistic um, level so that they become artists within their own right. We've got a couple of artists um, <coughs> who are doing really unusual work. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. Um, this is Zasiwe Lumkwana. She actually made this elephant. Um, she is... She is blind in one eye, she's partially, she, she has hard of hearing and she's not mobile. And she makes these incredible pieces which are now collected all over the world. That's her daughter bringing something in. This is also Zasiwe. Now, um, obviously with Zasiwe's work, every single piece, every single piece we make, oh, thank you, <laughs> every piece we make, the label has the artist's name on it. So people can collect that artist I'm just going to put this here. I have a habit of throwing them on the keyboard. Um, every piece is signed, and people who are now collected, like Cecilia, um, people are uh, yeah, crying out for her stuff. There's a huge upcharge on it, which means she gets a lot more money for it, and it encourages other beaders. Um, so, yeah, that's her work. All right, then we have another artist who, this is her pattern, it's very uh, Masoni like, and she is, oh, sorry, things have gotten a little bit muddled. Um, her name is um, Mankosi Modise. She is actually living in the Eastern Cape. She has AIDS and she also is looking after her brothers and sisters' children who died. So she's putting them through school and it takes her two days to come back down to Cape Town to bring her work. Um, but she makes nice money from it and she seems to be able to support herself. This is Joyce Sitoli who made this. You can see her holding this weird and wonderful camel. Um, Joyce is a character. Um, she comes in every night. Oh, sorry, these are beautiful figures. Um, she comes in also, well, we just never know when she's coming in, and then she lectures us and tells us she's a prophet, so she's obviously very good for us. Um, these are her dolls, sorry, midriffs. Um, and then these are some of the camels that she's decided to bring in. Um, we, we'll never get them back again, so, um, yeah. Then we make exhibition pieces for certain exhibitions. This was really big. The kudu was about this high, the horns. Um, so these were really big pieces. Um, this was for an exhibition. This, we do a lot of bespoke work, so people will say, can we do their dogs? Um, send us a picture of the dog, and uh, we have to do it. So this dog was Buddy, and, um, yeah. 
Anyway, so I was told exactly what the measurements were from nose to lip, from nose to eye, from nose to tail. Um, so I thought, well, I'd just better send the beads to the client. So I did, and he said, no, listen, I really don't want to micromanage. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway, Buddy went to him. This is another little dog, um, sort of skippicky kind of thing, um, <laughs> called, called Boy. Um, so, yeah, so basically we do a lot of bespoke, and it seems dogs are a big thing. We've just got an order for it. St. Bernard, um, so that'll take us a year. So in 2014, we were basically discovered um, at the Design in Darba, and um, it was part of the, um, the Guild exhibition. There were two brothers who were twin brothers who came out to South Africa with their gallery, and they were walking around and they saw us, and um, their name is Nikki and Simon Haas, the, the Haas brothers. They work out of, a, their studio is in Los Angeles, and their gallerist is in New York. Um, so they said they wanted to do a collaboration. Um, being the kind of person I am and the kind of place we work in, we never ever say no to anything. So I basically thought, well, it would be something like this with a, you know, a little bit of a tweak and no problem. Um, this is the work that they do normally um, that has been, um, oopsie. So we chose 16 beaders and decided to go with it. These were the wor working drawings. Um, this was exactly the drawing I got, um, that size, um, and we had to work with it. Um, so really, I looked at it and I just thought, oh my god, I can't bear it. Um, <laughs> I, I, just, I just thought this was going to kill me. And I'd have to say, no, I can't. Um, this is Nikki, is the one who drew these, and Simon, um, his brother, is the very, he's quite uh, mathematical, and he did some bead algorithms. So if I thought the drawings were difficult, um, I just stuck these up because they were nice illustrations. Um, there was no way I was going to, I didn't even understand them. He, he came out to South Africa to explain them, and I couldn't understand them. <laughs> All right, so, so this is one of the drawings that he sent me. Um, it was about an A5 drawing. Um, and this is the work that we started producing. So um, we worked in conjunction as well. It was really nice. We worked in conjunction with uh, two or three other South African artists. The bronze was done by Bronze Age. Um, this is some detail. Um, this is Isaac Newton. Um, they all have really funky kind of names like that. Um, there he is. He wasn't so big. Um, yeah. Well, this one, yeah. Uh, anyway, and um, we, I decided that because the women who are working with us are fairly traditional and conservative, I decided that maybe the tail wasn't going to reach the tongue so much. Um, so that was what we ended up with. Um, and then just a few details. Um, they made the originals, obviously, the, and the, the, of the legs, and it was then cast here. Um, so I, I really had a, I, I just took a lot of artistic license on these and just thought, you know, I'm just going to translate exactly, and then otherwise I'm not going to, and I'm just going to um, do my own thing. Um, yeah, this was the drawing that we got of an armchair. Um, a bit tricky. And um, so this is what we ended up doing. Um, there it is on the left hand side and the drawing on the top right. So that was our, um, you know, it's very easy to do the, <laughs> follow the, the lines in the front, but they never sent us anything at the back um, or the side. So, yeah, um, this is another one that they sent us. So we started off with working with a, um, a, a wood worker and a guy who worked in fiberglass. So the wood guy was Jean Duchesne and the fiberglass guy was Dilwyn, hmm, I've forgotten. And this was a bench. Um, it was nine foot long. Um, and yeah, so the beaders who, we worked with these beaders for two years. So they were permanently employed um, for two years in the studio. Um, and uh, so, which was amazing for them because what happened was these beaders really learned to, uh, the first thing I asked them to do when we started was to make mistakes. I said, spend a week doing something and making mistakes. Nothing can be wrong here. And we used a lot of those techniques that they came up with um, on, on the pieces. So, yep, so this is um, some of the pieces for the first phase that we did. Then what they also wanted us to do was dunes. Um, a bit tricky. 
And um, so we did, we brought these dunes in. The yellow and red one is about six foot tall. And it had to be split into three pieces. We couldn't get it through the door. Um, and you can see in the top little one here, he sits there. And this is um, some detail of the blue one and a gorgeous model. Um, <laughs> this is the total of what we did for the first phase. The mushrooms are eight, uh, yeah, eight foot tall. Um, and we, you can see, and the bronze, of course, was Bronze Age. And you can see this is where we worked with Renal Yodan on the, um, with felting. And there were 60 filaments on the inside of each of the, um, the mushrooms. This is the inside of a mushroom. And um, this was showcased very briefly at the second guild show, and then it, was, um, it went to Miami Basel. So these are all the beaders that we worked with. Um, and uh, yeah, so they've been, as I said, permanently employed. Um, the main part of the exhibition was, um, the collection was opened in 2016, uh, in February. And um, it was opened at the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian in New York. Um, so it was for the design triennial. And um, so myself and five of the four other beaders went to New York for the opening. Um, this is the um, uh, first page in the New Yorker, um, which incidentally, I just have to say that um, my family never really took me seriously as far as an artist went. Um, but when I got into the New Yorker, my father couldn't get over it and just, it was the best thing that ever happened to him. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so, at my fine age of 53, well, I made it. Um, yeah, this is just some part of the exhibition that, um, that was happening. Um, it was in the front um, area of, of the Cooper Hewitt, and it was the biggest area, and they painted it all pink. Uh, you can see the drawings behind them. Um, this was just one of the dunes that we did, and one of the animals, the big dune cut off. Um, one of the animals, another picture. Looking through the through to the exhibit, you can see the tiny little space other people were allocated. So we were very special. Um, there's some more. There's some more. Sorry, I'm just going to show you a couple of the um, slides of what else was on at the triennial. Sorry, I'm running over here. Um, I'll just whip through them. These were just some of the other um, exhibitions that I was kind of knocked out by. This was an entire room um, that was crocheted. Um, yeah, this was the glass piece that was on. This is just some different quick ideas. Okay. And of course, um, <laughs> what the, the um, photographer and the videographer, videographer, who they did these books especially about us. us. And um, his name is Mason, Mason Poole. And he happens to be the personal videographer and photographer for Beyonce. And Beyonce was um, doing the, um, what's that thing called, that big, uh, Super Bowl. Um, she was singing at the Super Bowl and she was asked to come specifically for us to the exhibition. So these are Beyonce and Jay-Z. He's very tall. And his bodyguard's taller. And um, yeah, so, she was, sorry, small photograph. So she was very interactive. It was really, really amazing. Nearly finished. And then um, we, part of this whole um, story of having these artists in the studio and me working very, very closely to them. I go to, I make a personal journey every year to India. And one of the places that I go to is um, McLeod Gunj up in Dharamsala where the, the Dalai Lama sits. And I was telling them all about the Dalai Lama and the Tibetans and how the struggle with the Tibetans and this terrible struggle with the Chinese and how they've just been wiped out in this sort of political struggle. And it really resonated with what we've been through in our country and for them what they've been through. Um, and so it was, it was really interesting how um, we connected. And I said to them what I really would love to do is I'd love to make a beaded Buddha. Um, so, um, Noliiso Mapakati, who's one of our better, uh, she really is brilliant, made this gorgeous little Buddha. And um, I was determined somehow to get it to the, I can't believe it. Okay, well, um, I was determined to get it to the Dalai Lama. And um, 
you have to motivate and send proposals and for weeks on end you have to do this. I never heard anything and eventually I realised I had his personal secretary's number so I whatsapped him and, um, <laughs> and I said like, I'm here and um, he said to me, well, you know, the, 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 His Holiness was actually doing a whole ordination of nuns so he couldn't really see me and then he was teaching for three days so, you know. And um, anyway, so, but he said to me, I then, he said to me, if you come down now, um, I'll take it and um, I'll give it to him. So I rushed down the, down the road and I can't believe this, he's cut in half. <laughs> So we presented, I presented it to the Dalai Lama. Sorry, I've got it on my phone if anyone wants to see the top of his head. Um, and he was absolutely enchanted. And as in his, I don't know if you know, but he just laughed and laughed and laughed. So he was really thrilled with that. So that seems to be what has so far been the pinnacle of um, what we've done. So anyway, that's all about us. Um, yeah.